hanging on the cross. And he could see the soldiers that had hung him on that cross. And he saw the people who had come desiring to see his finish. Desiring to see the end of Jesus Christ. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priest in the temple. And Christ said what? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, was that prayer just for them? No. See a lot of head shakes. No. That prayer for is this day. That prayer is for this time that we're in right now. That he is about forgiveness. And we've got to stop judging people. We've got to stop. We're not qualified to judge people. It's not in our DNA. We're not created to judge people. We're created to love people. And I know it's the hardest time. And I'm going to say this because my wife's not here this morning. <laughs> she might be watching this on live stream, though. I'm not sure. What I'm saying is the fact one day she looked at me, and there was something going on at that time, and she looked at me and she says, Really? You mean everybody? I said, you don't have to ask me that. You need to ask. You need to ask the Father. For only He can give you confirmation. And as time goes on, as we draw closer to the Lord, what happens to us? Our hearts change. Our minds change. All of a sudden, our eyes are opened. And we see we see things. My wife just experienced cataract surgery. She's had one eye done and one eye not finished. She opened her eyes and she says, oh my goodness. And I said, what? what? What's that? She says, I can't believe the clarity two days after surgery that she experienced from the eye that had been worked on. It was so clear. It was new life. We can have that clarity. That clarity is offered to each and every one of us, not by the, by the scalpel, not by the, the surgeon, but by the great physician, the Lord Jesus Christ, in each one of our lives can let us see what he would have us see, his realm, his kingdom, which is preparing to return to this earth. Yes, sister. Um. I don't, okay, in the news lately, there's been some, I don't have the news, but anyway, uh, some people are becoming irate when people say it is written. And so the adversary, you know, the way that our world is behaving right now, they're taking great offense that someone would be willing to quote the Bible and saying, it is written, and it makes that spirit within them angry. Mm -hmm. But as I told my good friend, I says, we need to pray for those people. Pray for every one of them that their hearts would be changed. And then I thought, okay, we're supposed to be praying for over our flocks and our fields and all that. But uh, in God Calling, it says we're supposed to be praying for the politicians, and I thought, oh my, and uh, and all these people who are like saying, making these new rules up about how we're supposed to be talking and not talking, and say, it is written, mm -hmm. is something that goes way beyond their imaginings and what is they're trying to propose for our world, yes. that they circumscribe our world and they want to limit us away from the Lord. So we need to keep the words, it is written as a part of our thinking. I says, don't judge these people, pray for them. Amen. Have them in prayer. Sure. 
Well, and as a testimony of that, as I continue reading here in 185, and now Alma saith unto them, Do ye believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Do we believe that? And I say that you need to go and you need to study. And we were given a message a few years ago. And we were encouraged to study pray, meditate, and surrender. That we would surrender our hearts unto the holy written word, the preciousness of what the Lord has given us. And let us be those believers. Let us be those that have turned our lives to the Lord and be in his comfort, be in his peace, for that's what he desires for us. He desires for each one of us, each household here, each household that we come in contact with to be at peace. To be at peace. And as Alma is expressing here, the power of prayer is such a critical instrument that we would abide in, in, in time whether it's a quick prayer just before we meet someone, if we feel a bad spirit here, you know, I, I, and, and I just happen, to, just happen to have the book of 1 John opened here, and I'd like for us to look at 1 John, the fourth chapter. You can read this uh, a little later on if you want to. But in the fourth chapter, Jesus Christ is saying, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We need, to, we need to put that armor of the Lord on each day as we lead the comfort and the security of our homes. We need to prepare ourselves for what is around us, that we might be at peace, and that peace that peace will transform those we come in contact with. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. For every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. There's your answer, Jackie. When they confess that... The Bible? That's not true. He's saying right here, he's, he's, he's giving his word for our understanding that we would not judge, okay? That we could take judgment out of our, our bodies, out of our minds, out of our eyes, and let us see the truth. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, it is already in the world. And that was written then. He's been here since the fall. He's been here since he fell to earth. This is his world. Yes, Brother Jim. I'm, I'm reading out of 1 John, the fourth chapter. You don't need the number, just read the whole chapter. Or, or, or that whole, uh, yes, uh, chapter 4. And here's, here's the critical point. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Yes, Jonathan. I began to notice in college that people would, would use the term spiritual experience. Oh, I had a spiritual experience. And I, and I started to become aware that they, they would not specify I had an experience with the Holy Spirit of God. They just had an experience with a spirit. Yeah. And, and I, I still remember 
uh, you know, the, all these kids would, oh, you got to come to our prayer service tonight. And I'd visit, and I'm looking around going, this, this is kind of weird. <laughs> I, I mean, the guy up front, he'd, he'd be offering a prayer, but he'd have somebody with a guitar next to him playing an accompaniment. Like, he couldn't pray without yeah. making a production of it. And, you know, you, there's all these books out there, you know, to no end. Oh, you know, this is, this is the truth. Check out this experience I had. But then sometimes when you look into it, it's like you, you did not come back with a testimony of, of God and of Jesus Christ. You just, you had this experience, but whoever it came from was not leading you in that direction. Yes. And, and I, I also think of the people that, on the one hand, I recognize that, that people with a traditional Hebrew background, like, you know, such as Jews, and we got to remember there are 12 tribes, and they're one of them, that they may have an understanding of the scriptures that we don't. Mm -hmm. But the Book of Mormon points out, if you can look through these scriptures and not come out with a belief in Jesus Christ, and you say you believe the scriptures, you don't understand them because this is what they testify of. And Moses was one of the big proponents of that testimony that there's somebody coming. And, you know, and just like John the Baptist was, he was a, he was a Jew. Oh. And he was pointing out, there is somebody coming. And no matter what, how highly you may think of me, I'm not even worthy to undo the shoe on his foot yeah. in a servant's role. That was a servant job when you showed up to somebody's house to undo their shoes and wash their feet. He yeah. was pointing out, no matter how highly you think of me, I am not even worthy of doing this servant's role. Yeah. And he was testifying of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, as Brother Jonathan is bringing up, in this day, in this time right now, if you don't have that witness, if you don't have that, that term of Jesus Christ in your life, ask for it. If you would get on your knees, bow down and ask the Lord, truth believing that he will deliver you unto the truth, you will receive it. And many people that have doubted and talked against the Book of Mormon I've got a brother, Lynn Reidenauer, a good Southern Baptist, and he used to sit outside in our LDS church over in Illinois. He had taken his wife to work, and he bears his testimony. I've heard him bear it a hundred times. But he sat out in front of the church, and he prayed. He prayed against the saints. He prayed that the wrath of the Lord would come down upon them. that the real truth would come and even to the point of devastating these people that were worshiping in this tabernacle. And right now, I need to see if I can get Brother Lynn to come here and give his witness of how the Lord changed his life. And, the, and many, many times he stood in front of Southern Baptist conventions, <laughs> gatherings, churches, and he has witnessed reading out of the Book of Mormon the truth before them. And it is written upon his heart. He's written many books about his testimony, about his witnesses as life's changed because of belief. Just as we, when we set ourselves in stone, we better watch where we're stepping, where we're at. And I want to read one thing here. We're running out of time here. Let me, Roland, I'm going to get to you, okay? Um, I want to read right there in chapter 5 of 1 John. I love the book of 1 John because when I've been called to enter a home of people who have questions about turning their life to Jesus Christ, about turning their life over to God the Father, about the receiving of the Holy Spirit, an abridged version of what they need to know, I open their book and I ask them to open their Bible to the book of 1 John. And we go through that at their kitchen table. 
and all the instruction, all the instruction of eternal life is written, is written by the prophet John. But I want to read out of the fifth chapter. Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him, that begot loveth him also, that is begotten of him. So the statement is that we need to love one another. We need to love one another because he first loved us. And by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. We should not struggle with the commandments, but we should embrace them. They are life-saving. They lead us to eternal life. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That is his promise. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith believing, brothers and sisters. Brother Roland. Jonathan touched on John the Baptist yeah. saying, not worthy to unlatch the shoelace. Yeah. And then the first time he saw Christ after Christ started his ministry, mm. he says, behold the Lamb of God. Amen. And then Revelations towards the end of the whole entire thing says, worthy is the Lamb to receive blessing and honor and glory and power yes. be unto him who yes. sitteth on the throne. Amen, brother. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us as we prepare for uh, the coming service. I ask us to keep in prayer to receive that portion of the Lord into our hearts, into our minds. Thank you and God bless you, each household that is represented here and on live stream.